this session. Uh, my name is Alok and with me is my co-presenter, my colleague, uh, Prasad. Hi, everyone. So, Prasad and I are from Infosys uh, Limited and we are from the IT process consulting practice. So, we've been working actively with clients, advising them on their transformation to agile, scaling agile, DevOps, etc. So, what we have here today is just an experience sharing around uh, speed to value. Right, so before uh, really moving forward, let me just tell you what, what exactly speed to value is about. I'm sure you, uh, you, know, you, you already know about it. But uh, so simply put, speed to value is how do you really accelerate the realization of business value from the IT initiatives that you're running. And we're gonna be talking from the context of enterprise IT. So large, large enterprises who are running their IT functions and uh, you know, they're supporting their business and driving key business initiatives. So how do they really accelerate the realization of business value? How do they really accelerate the realization of uh, the business cases that form the basis for all their investments and IT initiatives? So that's the, that's the context and it's gonna be based on whatever experiences uh, that we've gathered by interacting with clients. So, so I, th I think it's very important to first uh, understand the challenges that today large enterprises are facing, right? So enterprise, environment is becoming increasingly complex, right? So there is a growing complexity of the tech landscape uh, and there are challenges which I'm gonna be talking about as we go forward. So heterogeneous technologies, right? So you take any large IT shop today, it is adopting new technologies, the smack of the world. It has to live with its legacy and also you have the products and cards. So the whole, I mean, it, it, the whole thing is becoming actually very messy if, if you really, really ask me. So the challenge is that in this kind of ever increasing complex tech environment, how do you really drive some of these initiatives? Right? How do you really scale agile, right? How do you drive DevOps with the objective of obviously accelerating throughput, productivity and value to your end business, right? The other uh, significant challenge which we see in large enterprises is there is not really a seamless view of the end-to-end -end value stream, right? So if you look at the IT value chain, right? across plan, build and run, the typical, you know, the SDLC view, this view is actually broken in most of the large enterprises. So you have the app dev team, the development team, which is just focusing on optimizing development, right? You have the QA team or the testing team, which is just looking at how efficiently they can run their testing. And then of course you have your operations team or the support team, whose primary objective is to how they can adhere to their SLAs. So each one of them is trying to do local optimization and that is actually impacting the you know, the global efficiency of the end-to-end -end process, okay? And to make matters worse, right? So most of our clients, large enterprises, they are working in a multi-vendor environment, right? And I'll give you a classic example. I mean, this is something which in a recent uh, meeting with the CIO, this is what he had to say. He's saying, look, I have outsourced my application development to Infosys and TCS. Uh, testing is being done by Wipro. Support is being done by IBM and the entire uh, infra piece has been given to you know, HP or CSC. So he's saying that I really don't have an end-to-end -end control on, on what I'm doing across the value chain, right? So, so and, and again, on top of this, e with each vendor, you have a different type of contract, you have a different type of, you know, SLAs which have been agreed. And just imagine in this environment, then you're trying to scale agile. So you're scale, trying to scale agile in a portfolio where there are multiple vendors present and doing different parts of the you know, life cycle. So you can imagine the challenge. Same with DevOps, right? I mean, you're trying to DevOps in this kind of environment. Custom apps, enterprise products. So we talked about that earlier, heterogeneous technologies. So most of the clients, most of the large enterprises, if you look at their enterprise IT strategy, so obviously it's a, there's a lot of focus on products, right? So some IT shops are purely SAP shops or Oracle shops, or now today they are trying to buy a lot of niche products as well. Uh, the business challenge, right? So IT today is actually being used for creating new business models. And I'm sure all of us are aware of what's happening in the Uber and you know, uh, what Airbnb has done. Uh, what Google and Amazon today are actually posing threats to a lot of traditional businesses because they're wondering that you know, these guys can do anything. I mean, they can enter into any business. I mean, I'm sure the auto giants are actually uh, worried about what Apple is gonna come up with, you know, the iCar. So, so you know, IT today is becoming basically the weapon with which the entire business model is being created. And that's why a lot of these traditional enterprises are very concerned as to what they need to, need to do. ID capacity, so obviously the CIOs are under pressure, they need to deliver more for less for more, 
right? So they have to be more productive, they have to increase throughput, and they have to amplify the impact on the business outcomes. So that's what I mean by, you know, do more with less for more. So these are some of the burning challenges, right, which they need to address. And of course, digital disruption. So every CIO you talk to, he's talking about a digital strategy, right? Want to go digital. Now, while they're trying to go digital, there's a heavy dependence on the legacy, right? So any digital transformation you drive, the legacy is kind of trying to, is, is dragging them down. Existence of legacy, again, it's not, the issue is not with the existence of legacy. The issue is the inherent technical debt, which is there in your legacy application and legacy systems, which acts as an you know, impediment when you're trying to drive uh, you know, uh, the, some of these digital transformation initiatives. So net net, what we have is the CIO or any large enterprise IT is trying to do a balancing act, you know, embracing the new technologies, trying to change the existing legacy, and while ensuring that the lights on is going very well. Right, nothing get impacted on the business side. So you can imagine, this is the complex environment in which we are trying to now scale agile, bring in DevOps, drive lean and all that stuff. So it's very important to be cognizant of these challenges. And, and the key question today, if you ask the CIO is, obviously are we solving the right solution, right problems, right? So, so they're building a lot of solutions, but are those solutions geared towards solving the right problems? Uh, how do I build robust solutions, right, uh, with speed? you know, faster, that's what, you know, speed to value is about. And last but not the least, am I really impacting the business outcomes by doing all this? So I'll stop here, I mean, just to share this, and uh, Prasad is gonna talk about what are the emerging patterns that we are seeing clients are trying to do. Thanks, thanks a lot, um, <clears throat> Thanks, so it's important for us to, uh, you know, as virtue of our job, we do get an opportunity to interact with a lot of CIO office. So what, what we're gonna discuss is the patterns which we see across the body of knowledge which is existing, and how, how the, they are getting into this journey, right? And how, how, how these uh, strategies are getting uh, you know, in, in, into place, right? Because it's more of execution is also very important, right? So some of, some of the trends, it, it's all about, um, uh, you know, the, the design thinking is really picking up. It's around the corner for some time. It's really picking up. You know, in fact, one of our uh, clients in Switzerland who are, uh, who are into manufacturing of chemicals and fertilizers, you know, they were never looking at what is what is the what is the value that which they give to the end customer who are farmers. So today they are bringing farmers onto the board and doing a design thinking with them and coming up with products which a farmer really need to do a yield management. <coughs> it's not about yield management. It's not about the fertilizer or the chemicals anymore, right? So, so it's important uh, for enterprises is realizing this. They want to bring uh, the, the the end users or the clients early in the game. And let, let us do it very quickly so that they are building the right, right, so right solution and giving the right, uh, right solution for the problems. And, and again, the orchestration of uh, value stream is important. It's, it's, not, it's not great in putting this in a PPT. It's, it's great to see hey, you got your build plan, build run. Uh, it's not, that's, not the, that's not the deal. The deal is all about how do you orchestrate this, right? Uh, you know, how do we ensure that systemically there is a collaboration happening? How do we, how do we ensure that uh, th th there, is, there is a way in which uh, somebody is looking at the entire governance of this, this you know, uh, whether, whether it is distributed or it's one, uh, one, one particular place. If, for example, you know, one of the largest telecom company in UK, when we were having a conversation, they're very particularly, you know, they want to get into DevOps because it's one of the big program, but they never had a clue the kind of time which they spend in the planning, right? So when from a business idea, when they get it from the business, they take three to four months to really come up with a business case which could be taken further into the build. So it means you know, it's, it's a huge, huge, it's, it's a realization. When we did a value stream mapping for them, it is a huge realization that the value has been completely broken. There is a lot of handshake. There are at least some three to four different stakeholders participating in the planning activity. There are tech support guys coming into picture. There are the end user community coming into picture. There are multiple um, you know, uh, uh, product owners coming into picture. So it's, it's important to really look into the value stream and orchestrate that using systems. And thanks to the tool ecosystem today, thanks to the ALM application lifecycle management system, it's helping them to get there. And, and it's important, it's important in any enterprise uh, you know, class application or product that the chances and the risk taking ab ability of them is, is much lower than you know a internet startup, right? Because the kind of uh, uh, risk which they are exposed to is much lesser than in a, in a large scale bank. For example, in a bank, when they wanted to do certain experiments, they, they were very particular, they, they want speed, but their, their business don't want to screw up the existing functionality which is there, and which they don't, they, the stability was very critical thing. Right? And, and stability 
at what cost? Speed at what cost? There's a trade-off, right? So, so one of the strategy which we did for the largest, uh, you know, computer manufacturer, what we have done is their key challenge was speed is fine, but they had a huge uh, st stability issue in the production. So we did an exercise on looking in what are the factors influencing the quality of the production systems and look from there, saying that what are the f influencing factors? How do we influence? So we ended up in a strategy of cleaning up the developer workbench. Enabling developer workbench was one of the strategy there, right? It was nothing to agile. It was more about how do we enable a developer's workbench? How do we empower them? And ensuring that some of those policies can be enforced there. So that was impacting their stability. And this is an in interesting area which we are doing a lot of conversations with many of the clients today. Because most of the CIO you take today, they're all managing a billion dollar uh, you know, budget. It's, it's, it's not a lesser, lesser number of money, right? Because if you take about a marketing budget, you take about a sales budget, you take about a finance budget, this is very equivalently powerful budget he has, got, he has got. So he needs to take economics based decision. So you've got a lot of, lot of data. Right, you got data related from the production systems. You got data related to uh, your, uh, you know, uh, build. So for example, your your, your uh, defects, your project planning data, uh, your data related to your, um, uh, you know, issues which is coming on the production system, the time uh, elapsed which he has got, he has got the, the the velocity of the team. So you know, a lot of lot of data. He's sitting on a lot of data. So nobody is really looking at how do we do an analytics on top of it. And uh, you know, I, I IT is helping doing analytics for the business, but how why IT is not doing for themselves, right? So it's important. We are doing a lot of conversation because this will give them a lot of insights on where to where to invest. So whether to uh, whether to really automate this part or whether whether to do certain something else, which which will make their business case uh, really valid. So this is one of the important thing which we are having at least some four or five conversations we are having at this point in time to ensure that how do we make use of existing data of IT to 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 help them in running their IT business effectively. It's another important thing, IT for IT, right? So, so far, IT was supporting business in automating their business process. So who is going to automate the business process of IT? Right? So, uh, and the, the kind of conversations which he had with one of the banks in uh, Europe, they had, they had a huge, huge, huge systems which they had. They had a lot of tools. You name any tools in this world, they had. The biggest challenge was how do we you know, put tight together all these tools and try to create a value stream out of it than having multiple tools in the ecosystem. Right? It's, it's all important of how do we manage IT as a business and orchestrate the value of business process of the IT. Right? It, it, it is very important because IT is not doing just uh, uh, you know, solving a problem today. Right? IT is, as Alok said, and uh, as we heard uh, you know, from Jeff in the morning, IT is driving uh, you know, to finding the right business problems. So when IT is doing such cut cutting edge stuff, why they are deprived of uh, you know, it, uh, automation, the technology, which they used to give it for another business, right? Fine. To just to summarize this, right? You know, how do we start? You know, the, the you got some questions. So how do we how do we start this, right? So so it's it's important to really look at when we want to reach that particular value. There's multiple levers, right? Of course, agile is one of the key lever. So agile definitely help you to really make your bills very effectively. It, it's about um, you know, are we are we finding right 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 problems? Design thinking. Ensuring that you know these last mails have been pulling. So the multiple strategies are coming together. It's not that you know you you are doing agile and you're going to get everything what you want to be, right? It's about multiple strategies, multiple levers, and and it need to be put into the right perspectives, right? And the investment, which which one I, I'm, I'm going to start all the things at the same time, or how I'm going to you know it's all about the context, right? And where we are today, and how we want to take that uh, you know next step. So how do we put into practice? So this is very important. How do we put into practice, right? So, so this is what the pattern, and this is what we are seeing, and this is what we are doing with our clients today. So step one is all about come up with an IT value stream. And uh, this is one of the techniques which has been used in Lean Six Sigma uh, for quite some time. So it's not anything, anything new. It's all bringing about and opening the eyes of the people, right? We have seen people getting delighted by seeing an IT value stream, saying that, oh, this is the kind of waste which I'm building into the system. These are the kind of bottlenecks I'm having in the system. These are the kind of wait times I'm having in the system. So even though everyone, uh, everyone is aware of it, it's important to really articulate it and communicate back, and then identify the key impediments. There will be hundreds of them. Whether all are important, everything is important, but which are the one I need to prioritize? Which are the low-hanging fruits? Which one will get me the right ROI? Because you know there could be a legacy system where your, your impediment is, I, I need to automate all the test cases for that particular legacy system. Do you have the ROI for that? It's, it's, it's an impediment. But 
does it give the right ROI? So does that particular application portfolio is, is going to have the frequent changes where that's where the money is uh, you know, coming into the business. So it's important to really look at and prioritize and this is where again we can use agile principles. Look at this, there should be a product owner for IT for IT now. Right? There should be a product owner who understands IT space well. So that's a change which we are seeing in enterprise circle, right? It's, it's great about you know, what we do it in the product circle, but enterprise circles are, are very, very different in this particular context. For these kind of agile implementation that has been delivered cross-functional or across uh, silos, so to speak. We, we have, you know, we have a lot of information. At this point in time, I'm, I'm not having those discussion here. So we, we do have a pattern because 50% of our projects today are running in Agile. I can cite one, uh, I can cite one example quickly. So there's a large uh, financial services provider in the US, a leading card issuer, and uh, they run an IT shop which has 18,000 people, and they work with seven vendors. So highly complex environment, globally distributed. And so, so the entire work is being done in an on-site offshore multi-location and all. So they started an uh, agile journey last th you know, three years back and uh, kind of we, we helped them start off with their transformation. The immediate result they saw, I mean that was the first result they saw, they found there was a very, uh, there was a dramatic increase in the quality of code going into production. So, so when the UAT happened, the business guys were really thrilled because they said we've never had a release which went through UAT so smoothly. Right, so I'm, I'm just giving, so that was the first result they saw and that gave confidence to business, yes, this works, right? Because the last thing the business guy wants is something going getting into production and it's breaking something. And today, uh, this particular organization is really a sc scaling agile in a big way and more importantly, business have bought into it. So, you know, that's, that's the... Uh, Definitely we can publish in a different location, we can do that, we have a lot of insights. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, kind of a credential, that's going to be a good idea of how we can do that across. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Fine. So this is step one. You know, look, look into this. Identify your key impediments. Run, run your agile, uh, you know, uh, approach in this particular space, right? And and of course you prioritize, and it becomes a lot of capabilities. When you look into large enterprise IT, it's all about the capabilities now, right? It'll be capability around your build. It'll be capability around your planning. It'll be cap capability around your release management. It will be capability around your operations. Uh, you have to identify, you'll have maybe hundreds of laundry list of capabilities. So that capabilities are acquired through set of practices and of course through set of automation of the tools, right? So, and, and of, of course it will impact a way of working also. So there are, uh, you know, uh, as we speak, at least in seven or eight such occasions, we are helping them to really look at what are set of capabilities and how do we put in the roadmap, right? It's very important, how do we put this into a roadmap? Because it's all the capabilities do you want to acquire in, uh, you know, in, in first uh, uh, year? or all these capabilities we want in first three months. It's all dependent upon the appetite of the enterprise, appetite of the context and what is important for them. So it's, it's very important to really look at the context and what is what really matters at that particular context. And, and very important thing is this is going to bring, this is where the lean principles, all your change management principle, you know, because I'm just trying to connect all the dots of whatever that you know, discussions we had in the agile, right? So all these have to come together to ensure that there is, there is a change uh, required at all the levels, at your strategic level, tactic level, the way the people work, the processes, the way you do contracting, because today we are influencing some of our largest vendors to do agile contracting, because you, know, you can't do a contracting in an MSA uh, in an in in old fashioned way, and you say that you, know, you, you expect your partners to be in agile, it doesn't work, right? So there is a change, so what I'm saying is to, to, to step back, step one, value stream, identify the implements, step two, identify the capabilities. Step three is influencing the change. So these are the places you need uh, ag agile. And you know, to, to point you know, some of these, some of the key, key things which we are seeing, you know, how, do you, how are you looking into the entire sp space, right? It's, it's more about uh, having quality, stability, and resilience, and, and of course speed. You know, these are the there are two uh, you know, key things uh, in the same breath most of the enterprise need. But it's important to learn quickly, but also at what cost? And it's important to uh, ensure that the new changes which I make will have uh, you know, certain, um, uh, certain value coming in from it and as well as the speed, right. So to just to summarize, right, you know, to, to it's important for us to understand and be cognizant as uh, Alok mentioned, it's all about being aware of an enterprise context is very important, right. Product, products are great, but if you take about an, uh, any uh, a global 100, 200 enterprise whom we serve, they have hundreds of products coming there 
hundreds of products coming there. Right? If you take about a telecom chain, we are working with a telecom chain, in one value stream of customer care or one value stream of billing, you get at least 250 products. And all these products need to live together to create a value stream. So it's, it's, not, it's not you know having um, a change made in one particular product. So it's, 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 a, it's a little different world. And you have to really look at multiple strategies to really bring the value uh, which has been uh, the required at enterprise. Because enterprise need the, need the speed. Enterprise need that particular uh, you know, uh, resilience. And multiple focus strategies, as, men as mentioned. And uh, uh, to, to, to just summarize, the, the, the key thing is, what are the engineering outcomes which you get while doing your agile, whether it is from your agile engineering practices or whatever the business practices you get, it's all about connecting into a business outcomes. Because it's, it's very important to uh, focus the business outcomes on whatever the IT uh, or, or engineering strategy you're getting into. So, so this is what exactly we want to uh, discuss. You know, it's, I know it's, it's a rushing through se session, but it's meant, meant like this. So instead of taking one case, we thought we'll discuss multiple uh, you know, set of strategies. So this is what we want to leave with it. In fact, you know, to, to, to make it a point, to take away for you is this. You know, this, is, this is the kind of strategies which you have to look at it when, when it is in a large enterprise context. We stop here. We can have some questions. I got your question, right? Uh, so, so it's, it's important, right? See, I, I, that's what Alok was saying, right? Even, even this change apply, is applicable to all the service companies also. So today, when we come up with any large deals, it's not that you know uh, your testing guys are front-ending it, or your development guys are front-ending it, or your you know uh, uh, guys who are doing release management or infrastructure is front-ending it. So there need to be a cross-team starting from your pre-sales activity. So from your pre-sales activity itself, your team has to be like that. But it's a big change for us, right? We coming from the service industry, you know, it's, it's not just about the preaching. It's, it's a, we, we have to change ourselves, right? So it's important to, from the pre-sales activity itself, how do you make a pre-sales team till then a, a, a pursuit, then getting into a first uh, kick in your initial bootstrapping team, till your management, everything has to be a cross-functional. So today that ecosystem is getting in, <coughs> but it, it is a slow, I, I accept your point, it's slow, but we are going there. Any yeah, I think that's correct. And I think if you look at from the client side also, right, most of the large enterprises, I mean, th the way they are organized also, they're in a very siloed way, right? So there is some portfolio management group sitting there. There's an enterprise architecture group sitting there who are, you know, devising the strategy. There is an operations group. So there is a, there is a very, f there's a lot of fragmentation in the way they are also organized. But at least from a services company's perspective, we are trying to drive a communication which brings different stakeholders together on the table right from day one. It's a challenge, but uh, I think we are seeing some good uh, traction there. So uh, how that one these capabilities are working together uh, for the success of any project whenever it materializes. Correct, the correct, correct. project is materialized. Correct, and that's where the governance part becomes very important, right? So there has to be a very strong governance where you are measuring what you're doing. See, you're doing agile, but is there any measurement of what exactly is happening in terms of how your projects are successfully being delivered and also I think the governance part and a good set of metrics which help you in really monitor and measure and connect the engineering outcomes which you talked about to the business outcomes. I think that, that I think is very, very, very critical. DevOps coming in, it will also help what you're just saying. Because DevOps essentially is trying to bring all the parties together in some way. So I think in the interest of time, uh, I'll stop here. Unless we are any around here, I think you know if you have yeah. any specific discussion, specific uh, example.